So my name is Matt. Hi, how are you? I know it's a tough time slot after lunch. But I'm the CEO of Bridge, which is the world's first private equity and venture capital backed, wrap your heads around this, private mass transportation provider. So let me bring you through briefly what we do, if we can get the clicker to work. So a big thing that we've talked all about today is how cities are getting bigger, right? So we're putting more and more people into cities, and we're trying to figure out how to sustain these populations. I just want to say I'm completely humbled by everybody else's work, right? So with our success over the past couple of weeks, I've gotten a chance to speak at a lot of different places, and I've never been as bold away as I am by all the great things that, that these folks are doing. So once we take care of sanitation, once we take care of food supply, once we take care of water supply, what is one of the biggest things that we still have to do as a city? Move. Exactly. Not like we let into it at all, but, 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 but thank, thank, thank you so much for the audience participation point. So transportation, absolutely. So when we start to think about intercity trans, intra-city or inter-city transportation, we think of things that you know, really move a lot of people. But to really put this in perspective for you to how important intra-city transportation is, I want to give you an idea of the market size. Pe people, are, people are just blown away by this. So across the world, each year, this is last year, there are 15, 1, 5 billion mass transportation trips that happen each and every year. When people think of things that are sexy about transportation, they think of really cool things like bullet trains or things like segways, but nobody thinks of the little poor bus, right? So if you look at the bus, the bus is actually what carries most people around cities and is a vital link for people to get to work, for people to get to school, for people to get to see their friends. The bus is vitally important. However, it sometimes takes a second seat uh, to some of the more interesting transportation options. So when we started to think about how we can make cities better, we started out the farthest away possible from a city in a little town in Vermont called Middlebury. So I went to college in Middlebury, Vermont. I'm, I have a degree in biology. I was on an MD, PhD track. And one of my good friends said, I'm going to run for student government. And when he said, I'm going to run for student government, he said, well, my platform is going to be to make it easier for students to get to and from this tiny little campus in the middle of Vermont. So guess what happened when he got elected? Yeah, I, 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 well, you didn't guess because you were silent, but I'll tell you <laughs> that I then got stuck with actually implementing this. So I dug in and tried to figure out why people aren't using buses to get to and from for things like Thanksgiving break, Christmas break, spring break. We realized that the buses really weren't going where they needed to go. So we started to look at it and we started to say, well, hey, kids don't live in downtown New York. They don't live in downtown Boston. They don't live in downtown Dallas. They live, for all the Texas folks in here, they live in Spring, Texas, or they live in Westchester, or they live in Framingham, places that are outside. So what we started to do with the student government was be able to use big data, big data, in terms of zip code files to be able to understand where kids were actually living and then draw direct shuttle routes between school and centers of home locations uh, for major academic breaks. And then something really, really interesting happened. We had about 15 kids each year who were using the program, and that started to triple and quadruple just by designing more efficient and better mass transportation networks. So that has spread like wildfire across the country. So uh, just on our college and university side, we are the largest pop-up dynamic mass transportation provider by using this big data concept to be able to design more intelligent mass transportation routes to get people where they need to go. This is just sort of a representation of some of the schools that we're opening this fall, and we're rolling them out as quick as we can get it. But what we're really interested in is cities. So when uh, we started to develop these mass transportation networks for colleges and universities, we started to think, well, hey, we're moving thousands of kids on to and off of campuses for major academic breaks. Why can't we move thousands of people into and out of cities? So we looked right down the street into Boston, which was now where we're based, just over the river in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and started to see that there was a huge problem even in a transportation advanced city like Boston. Are there any Bostonians in here? OK. Somebody shout out what train that is. Green Line, exactly. So Boston's transportation system is way over capacity and was designed primarily in 1897, which is not representative at all of how the city has evolved since then. So we started to say, well, hey, we've developed these pop-up mass transportation networks for colleges and universities on new, novel, demand-driven routes. Why can't we do the same thing for cities? And then we sort of took a step back. It might be really cool to develop these routes, but it might also really be important. So this is a graph from the Brookings Institute that shows that if you are an average American citizen in an average American city, 
you have access to about 30% of the jobs in your metropolitan area via 90 minutes on public transit. Only 30% of jobs <laughs> via 90 minutes on public transportation. So while it was a huge problem, we realized that it also had a huge economic impact. So what we started to do was take millions and millions and millions of data points. This is not me anymore. We employ a data science team led by a PhD out of our Cambridge office. Millions and millions of data points to figure out how a city moves and to essentially boil it down to where people live and where people work. As soon as we could understand where people live and where people work, we then deployed direct shuttle networks in between those high density origin and high density destination areas. So anybody from Boston in here from Brookline or Coolidge Corner? Oh, one, excellent. How long does it take you to get to Kendall Square? About an hour on the T. Her words, not mine. So an hour on the T. So Coolidge Corner, if you look at the bottom of the screen here, Coolidge Corner to Kendall Square by the crow flies is about two and a half miles. One hour, one hour on the T, two and a half miles. So what we started to do was once we realized that there was a huge origin set, a huge destination set, what we did was we created a direct shuttle route, and now we get people from Coolidge Corner to Kendall Square in about 20 minutes. So how it works for the end user is we notify you that new services in your neighborhood, you sign up using a mobile app, you pay through a mobile app, and you check in with one of our representatives. Just like Uber, we don't own or operate any of the buses. We partner with local bus companies to provide the physical bus and driver, and we take you directly from your neighborhood and based on the data from your neighborhood, create dynamic shuttle routes that go directly to high density work destinations. So, also, does anybody notice the similarity <laughs> between this picture? So, by doing that, we've on average in Boston and some of the other cities that we're introducing, have cut people's commute times by up to an hour each day. So that's really important in Boston, but crucial in international cities. So as we've seen today, international cities are exploding in terms of population and population spread. And when I say that 30% of jobs are accessible via 90 minutes uh, in public transportation in the United States, that figure is way worse in a lot of developing cities. So what we've been able to do in Boston by implementing very, very dynamic, data-driven, point-to-point mass transportation networks has had a huge effect in an already developed city like Boston. So what we're doing now with our partners over, uh, with our venture capital partners and our strategic partners is taking that same concept and introducing it to the rest of the world. So while we're not looking for any money, and we don't want to hear from you if you do have money, we do want to hear from you if you're part of a city and would like to explore this with us in creating better mass transportation networks that truly do make better, better cities. Thanks. <laughs>